So lesson eight, we have minor trias over RCs with anticipation. We won't listen to that. I really like the idea of uh, exploring every little aspect of music, whether it's triads, species, line writing tools like leading tones, anticipation, and exploring them in a concentrated way. So this is lesson eight. Now, lesson nine, Matrix of Triads. Great stuff. Great stuff. I really liked this lesson. There's a, a lot of things. It's very, it's a huge, huge topic. As you said in the lesson, we have access to all the different root cycles. For instance, here, this one and this one, C and D, from set one and set two, we have the root cycle two. Here it's a root cycle three, so on. Anyway, I won't get into this topic very much. I just wanted to say that I find it very, uh, very helpful. So what I've used as a starting material is set one ascending major, and set two from ascending major. That's it. I've used them in open voicing. I tackled a little bit of bitonality here set 2 over set 1 and I had the idea of using set 1 with a pedal tone which I didn't end up using in the sketch but anyway that's part of the game it's only harmonic material for some reason I've put the melodic material in the sketch I should have put it in this page but uh, I didn't anyway here is the material Open voicings. Now set two verse at one. the penalty. Great start for a piece. Let's go to the sketch. In the sketch, I just used the material shown in the previous page, but I've put it into sections. So the intro is set one in open voicings, section A which is the first melodic idea with the same open voicings played twice. Now section B is set 2 over set A, so that's the bitonal part with a similar melodic idea. Then back to the first melodic idea, that's a repeat. Obviously in the orchestration I'll do some changes to, to change colors. And then the outro, which is chords from the set, set two back to set one, and then a little coda alternating between the first two chords of set one. In the sketch, I end up on C, but actually in the development, I ended up using E minor as the final chord. So a few things to show is that since I didn't write a piece for lesson eight, I've used some anticipation here. I wanted to use them wanted to have a better feel of what they can bring emotionally. So you've got anticipation all over the place in the melody. Another thing, you see DPTs here. You see voice crossing. So I'm trying to use um, more and more the line writing tools in my melody writing. So let's hear that.
Okay, good stuff. One thing I forgot to mention is that I've used PCs here too. So now let's go to the development. Here it is. Okay, so that's the intro. A section in the in this score is uh, the intro in the low strings, which a little decoration trills in the flutes. Then the melody given to strings with a little harmonic figuration in the woodwinds playing arpeggios and uh, that's the set two over set one part by tonal part using solo muted trumpet as uh, the melodic instrument that sounds great actually you'll see that later on then back to the repeat of the first melodic idea but this time doubled it in the woodwinds and with the brass in there. So that's, that's a different color from the first iteration of the melody. And the outro with the same harmonic figuration idea going back into the final four bars. That's for the orchestration. So let's hear that. So oh, that's it. I really like the result. It's a simple, simple form, simple chords. Still great. Like it. So thank you. Talk to you later, Frank. Bye-bye.